It's in there. So just go straight back. I know. Just tell me when to stop. Come on. You put it down. Hey! I think that worked. Is that good? Yeah. You do a little, yeah, a little, no, I don't know. Turn. Which way? I don't know. Nope. <laughs> yep. Okay. Good morning, by the way. Welcome. Go to Facebook site, reported it. Facebook still and fits with live and zooming in as soon as you hit live. So you set up the shot and then it zooms in. If anyone knows how to fix that, let me know. If not, like I said, I reported it to Facebook. Hopefully they'll fix it. But welcome! Living Waters Live is our hashtag for all our online content. We are over a thousand videos, lots of content. Uh, join us. That was also really cool. Maybe we should just talk about this one. <laughs> it's a tradition. It's tradition. We have to throw this Okay. Uh, speaking of, we're, we're celebrating Advent in our homes this year. Uh, so you can see, very festive. We've added stockings. I don't know if you can see them now. But anyway, they're stockings. There. <laughs> you uh, can see the corner. Get a little close Christmas. We add things, you know? Um, we're going to light the candles in a little bit. We'll put the, the, the prime ones up front, so hopefully you'll be able to see them better this week. Uh, kind of burned them down a little bit, so they'll be brighter. Anyway, but uh, yeah, we're celebrating Advent at home. Thanks for for being with us. It was really great last night. Uh, start with Jazz and I. Thank you for Olivia for putting that together. Uh, thank you for everyone for, for coming out and, and having a good time with us and, and celebrating the season. It was very festive. Uh, it's good to see how people are celebrating and that's true of Advent too. You know, we're doing this Advent photo devotional. People are posted on that. Property set up the nativity at the church so you can take your selfies with the nativity or whatever you want to do. It's on our cover photo right now. Thank you property for setting that up. Uh, Singo this past week was amazing. Thank you for the comments putting that together. Like, we're festive here, Living Waters. COVID can't stop us. We're, we're rolling. So, yeah. Um, join us however you can. Celebrate. Let's, let's celebrate the season. Let's bring some hope and peace and joy and love to the world through the season of Advent. Let's celebrate in your home. This is exciting. All right. Let's see. Um, I mentioned the Advent Photo Devo. That's still going. 24, the 24 days leading up to Christmas. So, in December. Uh, I think today's word is peace. I know I haven't posted mine yet, but uh, yeah, those are coming in. As always, I really like at the end of the day, looking at what everyone has posted for each word. It's really neat to see the different representations of today, the different representations of peace. That's really neat. And some of them are a little like abstract, like prepare. We got some great ones. I was like, wow, it's blowing my mind. Anyway, uh, hymn sings are, speaking of Advent, uh, and Christmas now, two of the four uh, hymn sings have been released. All four have now been recorded in the studio. We, we finished up our contract there, of course, right now. And uh, the tour is upcoming. Anyway, after it's over, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but yes, uh, Christmas one is up. There's two more Christmases to come. Uh, every Saturday at 11 a.m., they go get released uh, leading up to Christmas. But of course, if you want to save them for later, just mark save. Well, they'll be on YouTube, too. Easy to find. So. Or if you don't want to use them all, that's fine, too. <laughs> anyway, but please, sing along. I, I said this on the video, just to be clear. Please, don't just listen to us. Sing along. Have some fun. Mute us if you have to. You know, I mean, whatever. Okay. So, oh, another Advent. Oh, I don't have it with me. But the uh, little blue, it's over on the box. So I'll move to another announcement while stuff's grabbing up. Um, did that. Taco truck. This week, this Tuesday, uh, we have... Because of COVID restrictions, we have certain times we need you to sign up for. So um, we really need you to sign up in advance. And we have a drive through system going. Lee's done a wonderful job with that. So thank you, Lee, for organizing. It's good to be able to support a, a small local business with a taco truck. And hey, you get to eat tacos. It's a win-win. Dinner's, you know. Volunteer to make dinner that night. Thank you. Uh, volunteer to make dinner that night. It's an easy, it's an easy one. Uh, but yeah, we have, I think it's running 6 to 8. I don't know, I've talked before. But uh, yeah, the, sign up for that, please, if you're going to get tacos. So we have that organized. So it'll be timely, it'll be smooth, and safe during COVID-19. It is encouraging our numbers have gone down a little bit in our counties. We're heading the right direction. Let's keep doing the right things, folks. This is good. This is good. All right. Votives. Wow, now you can't even see them so far away. Can you model that for me, Vanna? Oh, there we go. Very good. Very good. So, uh, I, I was at the church recently, a uh, building, and I saw that uh, there's still some of these left, about ooh, a third. So if you're like, oh, I don't know if there's any left, there still are some left in the bin. 
uh, please feel free to take, if you've already got one, you're going to burn it down, go take another one. It's, a, it's good. We're at that point. Um, <clears throat> we want to give them all away. Give them to your friends. Give them to your neighbors. We're having a, a season of lights and hope and peace and joy and love. Uh, we're celebrating these things. Advent in our home, right? Uh, we're going to start, uh, I picked one up. You, yeah, you just Okay. You. you did a good job. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, great, great job. Modeling the camera Moving for us. on. Anyway, <laughs> um, we are doing, uh, we're doing time, we have prayers every night. You can use it for a time of prayer. It could be like at the dinner table, a little little candle, minus hope at this time, right? Um, it could be uh, whatever, your morning coffee, or whatever you, you want some time to add a little little hope, a reminder that God's presence is there like that light. Use that candle. And like I said, we got more at the church, throw in the bin in front of the main doors. We can say got a third one left, so plenty still. So please, 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 please grab one. Um, get that, get that, get that. Drive through nativity. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so remember back. No, no, but remember back, um, back to uh, many years ago, otherwise known as April, uh, when we had, <laughs> when we had Good Friday drive through service. We stepped it up a degree. This is. The drive through activity is this Saturday. Again, please sign up in advance so we can be safe and we have time. Uh, we're going to have a yours truly narrating. And then our kids have put together, this This could be amazing, this drive through activity. You'll see. I don't want to. Where do they go to sign up? Oh, yeah. There's a link that goes on on Realm. Uh, I'm sure they will send it again. Uh, but, yes, there's been, it's been out on Realm. It's a Google form. Very easy, very simple. If you have trouble signing up, let Leah or myself know and we can help figure it out for you. But yes, um, we want to. I saw spots are already filling up, and it runs uh, pretty much all day. So find that spot. Ten minute inter intervals there. But yes, our, our kids are, are involved in, in putting this together, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be very good. It's gonna be very good. So we're gonna drive. So I should probably say it's a drive through the nativity story, you know, the whole Christmas thing. Uh, so yeah, please join us for that. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm really excited, and the kids, kids, and Lee, and everyone who's helped uh, the arts team. They did a great job with it. I'm very excited. Speaking of kids, the Living Waters Youth Group Christmas Party online is today, 3.30. Uh, we're going to party. We're going to um, play some Among Us. I've been practicing, so I will destroy you all in Christian love. And uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. Join us, 3.30 today. It should be a lot of fun. Well, the Zoom link has been out. Um, we'll Zoom, we'll Among Us, we'll have a great time. So celebrate some, some early Christmas, and uh, yeah, it'll be a fun time. 3.30 today. Um, is there anything? Yeah, okay, good. Yep. Yeah. I think I got them all. Oh, no, I didn't. Ha! <laughs> uh, finally, if you haven't, uh, we thank you to everyone who has pledged. We've gotten a bunch in. Thank you. Um, we want to get more. We're, we're behind last year's pace. I understand last year we had to, to send out um, people to hunt people down. No. Uh, we, we don't want to We don't want to have to, to twist arms, right? We, we want those pledges to get in. I know it's busy. It was the holidays. Well, it still is the holidays, I guess. It, it's a frantic time. 2020, I mean, whew, but please, if you get the chance, it helps us so much. It helps us plan. It's kind of like the census. It gives us the data we need to be able to best serve. Um, we want to, we're excited for 2021. This COVID's going to end, you know. And we want to hit the ground running. We're going to come out of this on fire. So uh, your pledges will help us plan for that. And growing our ministry still in, in this time of COVID. We're growing, we're learning, we're, we're deepening. It. It's going to be good. So uh, please, please, please get those pledges in if you have not. All right. Now I think that's everything. Do you see any other announcements? It's now further away. I think away. people are talking about... Karen reminded everyone that sign-up links are on the home page of our website as well. Oh, great. And I think people are just talking about taco truck sign-up and great. food night, good. if I'm understanding the comments. No, this I'm is good. sorry if I'm coming. reading it wrong, y'all. People who aren't me can, can answer. This is good. This is what we're here for. It's for each other. This is great. Give up to, uh, yeah, this is good. Okay. All right. Super. I'm not seeing anything frantic or in all caps. I think we're good. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody trying to remind you of anything, I don't think. Good. All right. Well, super. Well, with that, I, I invite you to begin the service with the lighting of the Advent candles wreath or whatever you have at your home to celebrate the occasion. We will have 
this prayer and blessing as Stephanie, our acolyte today, lights two candles. Bless pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. All right. And now we have the confession of forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess yes, that we are, are held captive, captive to by sin. sin. In, In spite, spite of our, our best, best efforts, efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's grace, endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, y'all. So our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. So Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, so literally the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. At the year B, Gospel of Mark. Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out of him, were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ, that's right. All right, so <laughs> we're going to start with the children's uh, message this morning. Good morning, kiddos. What's in the bag today? I'm just dying. And it's liturgically appropriate. It's blue now. It's great. It's a long time you have to All right. What is in the bag? What is in the bag? Oh, that's right. It's my holiday to-do list. I have so much to do. I don't know if you can see. I got a lot going on. Boy. Okay. Uh, tree. Check. No, no. I don't know if you, it's a crazy time of year. I right? get, uh, probably get homework. Oh, I'm sure in your list, conference, get sermon notes in. So I got to finish reading those because I love reading those and everyone's doing them, of course. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Any reports? Boy, you better get to make sure to get those in. Those were technically due yesterday. That's done. Check. Um, hmm. Uh, cookies. Got to have cookies. Got to make cookies. Cookies. Oh, it's just such a busy time of year. I, I've only done like a third of these and we're, we're, we're less than three weeks from Christmas. Right? Like this is crazy. It's a crazy time of year. I, I, I don't know when we get everything done. I mean, how can I prepare for Christmas uh, with so much to do still? Maybe, I, maybe I'm, I'm missing the message here in this Advent. We keep hearing prepare for the way of the Lord to figure today. Uh, uh, Keep awake, right? We'll check doing that. Um, <laughs> God, God has asked us to prepare for, for Christmas. And when I think of that, I think of all my to-do lists, my must, my shoulds, my have-tos. And it, it, I don't know, you guys kind of wound up about it. But what if God's inviting us to put this down for a little bit? Put down the pen and the, and the paper. Take a moment. Today we're celebrating peace. So take a moment and find some peace in the madness of everything that needs to happen. Whether it's for school, or your home, or celebrating for the holidays, wrapping presents. Oh my gosh, I can wrap more presents. Sorry, sorry, I'm not trying not to freak out. It's a good thing we're celebrating. It's not supposed to be stressful. And so instead of having us to do's, have a little fun with it. That's how we prepare the way. God wants this for us to be a fun time, a good time. A time to remember what God has done, all the to-do lists that God has fulfilled. Maybe if we don't get everything done, that's okay, too. Will you pray with me this morning? I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you. For your son, Jesus Christ. For your son, Jesus Christ. And for the season of Advent. And for this season of Advent. Please help us. Please help us. To find some peace. To find some peace. And have some fun. And have some fun. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, kids. Have a good week. And hey, if you're in a youth group or you have siblings in youth group, let me watch YouTube 3 30. I get you. When I think back to some of my greatest childhood memories, they often involve playing outside with, with all the kids in the neighborhood. We lived in the outermost suburbs of Philadelphia, kind of like the place we are here in Crystal Lake, Lake in the Hills area. Uh, not as built up yet, but um, it is now. And uh, there, there's plenty of space to, to play, to run, to imagine. And we did. We spent countless hours playing uh, all the different kinds of, of games together. By a narrow margin, though, the neighborhood's favorite game was Hide and Seek. Now, I think everyone watching this and worshiping with us uh, has played hide and seek at some point in their life. It's classic. I know I play with my car keys sometimes, unintentionally. Uh, and just in case, though, it's a game where everyone gets a certain amount of time to hide except the one seeker. And that seeker then opens their eyes after a set amount of time to go and find everyone, with the last one being found being the winner of the round. Now, being one of the larger kids for my age, 
uh, and not thus not being the best at hiding, I always enjoyed being the infamous it, the seeker. Uh, we play this game where we had to count using uh, to 40 using the infallible measure of saying Mississippi after each number. So, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and all the way up to 40. Okay, 40 Mississippi. Very, very important. And if you tried to, to cut Mississippi short, there's going to be big problems, okay? Uh, but once you got to that long-awaited 40 Mississippi, one had to shout out the arbitrary phrase with as much excitement as possible, ready or not, here I come, as you went to find the, the hidden ones. That phrase, ready or not, here I come, is what we receive today from the word of God. The phrase, prepare the way of the Lord that we hear as a refrain in Advent, it's kind of a fancy version of saying, ready or not, here I come, because God is coming. And to fully paint the picture from Scripture today, though, we need to remember the original context. From that famous Isaiah passage Stephanie uh, read for us today as our first reading, uh, this gospel writer, Mark, he quotes this passage for us today for a reason. Because at this point in Isaiah, the Israelites have been exiled, exiled for many, many years. They've been shipped away from the promised land that was given to them by God. A land that they learned to call home. And now generations of God's people have lived as exiled foreigners in a strange land clinging to a minority religion. I want you to understand, the Israelites have been hidden away from their home. And now the good news proclaimed today is that that long time of many, many Mississippis was up. That is the good news proclaimed today. God is coming to find them, to bring them out of exile, just as the shepherd gathers the lost sheep of their flock. And God's excited to find the lost sheep. God's like that child that's, that's been counting to 40 Mississippi, who really wants to, to take a, a peek out early. Uh, the child's just, just shaking with excitement to go search for everyone. God is so ready. Every valley shall be lifted up, Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground become level. And the rough place is a plain. Nothing will get in God's way to find those who God loves. See, I, I hear this passage today. And I envision God yelling out, Ready or not, here I come. And God begins the search for God's people. Maybe while saying, Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no, okay, you get the point. <clears throat> You're gonna finish it? Fine. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you, Israel. There you go. <laughs> That's for you, Stephanie. Thank you. <clears throat> now, we can see that prepare the way of the Lord. It's not some mild statement. That lets us know that Christmas is one week sooner. It's so much more than that. It has an extreme urgency behind it. Prepare the way of the Lord captures the excitement God has for finding and redeeming the lost. God's been anxiously awaiting the necessary time to find those who are lost. And now that time has come to seek them out, and nothing will stop God. God is so driven to find those who are hidden away because God still unconditionally loves them, despite all the heinous transgressions and repeated upon repeated mistakes upon mistakes that the Israelites made prior to the exile, that led to the exile. God still loves them. God still wants to redeem them, to save them from themselves. Despite the stubbornness of God's people to change and live in ways that are best for them, maybe it's a message you can hear right now, God is now seeking them out. They won't help themselves, but God will help them. Isaiah has received a prophecy of God's might and determination, but most of all, it is a prophecy of pure grace and love. 
God is willing to do whatever it takes to find those whom God loves. Which is funny. Because constantly, I hear a misnomer. The God of the Old Testament is fierce and angry, while the God of the New Testament is loving and forgiving. Fake news. This passage from Isaiah shows us it simply isn't true. In fact, uh, there are many passages like this in the Old Testament uh, full of grace. Just as there are certain passages in the New Testament, we just finished the Gospel of Matthew, hello. But one has to remember, uh, the time frame for the Old Testament is a lot more Mississippis than, than the New Testament, okay? There's a lot more time for humanity to constantly make mistakes, and boy, do they do that. I think in a time of pandemic, we can learn that humanity will continue to make plenty of mistakes. Therefore, the Bible is a holistic story of God's righteousness and of God's grace, or Lutheran terms, law and gospel. It's an everlasting story of humanity falling short and God gracefully redeeming us in spite of it. And it continues today. That's why Mark quotes this famous Isaiah passage. Mark wants to capture the overwhelming image of God's grace from Isaiah. And right away, the people of God will remember this great seeking action God has already done. The redemption and saving that God is known for. And guess what, people of God? In 2020, it is great to hear that God has and always will deliver and save us. Now you can see why Mark wants to start the gospel in this way, by reminding the hearer of who God is, what God has set on doing, lovingly seeking out the lost and those hidden away. Mark is telling us that this will happen in the gospel account of Jesus Christ. And what will happen in your very life as we prepare to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. But even more so, Mark's making a, a, a grand claim. The Gospel writer is saying, you know that old prophecy, the end of the exile that came to pass, that was pretty great. That story's not done. In our human short-sightedness, we took uh, it to mean what we could see and explain. We thought it was over and done. God had acted. It's over. We took that wonderful prophecy of grace and celebrated it uh, for what we exclusively thought it was about. That God would bring about uh, the end of the exile for the Israels, bring back to the promised land. But God promised more than that in that moment. And until Jesus Christ, we did not understand it. Yes, it meant the end of exile, but it also doubled to something greater. Out of an unconditional love, God is not only willing to move mountains and raise valleys to save us, but God is willing to take on our very existence and conquer death itself. Isaiah asks in verse 6, I think a question many of us are wondering right now in our faith. What shall I cry? How do we live in faith in this time? We are being the church, as we heard all last month. And in so doing, in the exile of this pandemic life, I think we're wondering, what shall we cry? What is God's message for this time? And I think today, Mark is answering that prophetic question the same way. What shall I cry? Cry what's written in Isaiah verse 10. Here is your God. Mark is asserting from the very first verse, in the very first chapter of his testimony, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God incarnate is not just some answer to earthly exile. It's the pathway back from an eternal exile. Jesus fulfills God's word by being a seeker of the lost, by being the good shepherd, by being the Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. Mark quotes Isaiah to show that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is that ultimate action promised by God out of unconditional love. It's all part of the same story of God and God's people. And Mark's not done. From the John the Baptist today, we have this Elijah-like figure who serves as the voice in the wilderness. More to come on that next week. A voice to proclaim truth. Jesus Christ came 
to baptize us with the Holy Spirit so we would be part of this ultimate coming in glory on the cross. A voice that prepares the way of the Lord to let the world know, ready or not, here God comes. So who is to hear that verse? Of, who is that voice of truth and salvation today? Who will proclaim the love of God through the coming of Jesus Christ? Will they wear camel fur and leather belts and locusts and wild honey? Will they be like Isaiah? No. They will be just like all the saints of God's kingdom. They will hear the word of God and be empowered to proclaim it. So people of God, what shall we cry? Hear this good news. Hear that there's a God who loves you, who will stop at nothing to seek you out, no matter how much stuff you hide under, no matter how much you have done or left undone, God is coming with redemption. Despite all that has happened to you, to your loved ones, no matter how bad things have gotten, God will deliver you. You know what to cry. Now God wants you to be that voice of love in the wilderness of life. Because the world needs to hear the hope of God's love and devotion. We need to hear a cry out of the good news of God's love. Who can overcome mountains and valleys and even death itself. Surely God's love will triumph over any obstacle. That story continues today. God will triumph over COVID. Be that voice of testimony. In the, in the world. We can be that random act of kindness that, that, that changes someone's day for the better. We can, we can share that good news with our neighbors and celebrating and decorating for the seasons, preparing. We can be an embodiment of God's love by, by checking in on someone, someone who's been alone in this world, who learns that someone loves them and cares about them. And there's a God that does too. We can be that voice in, uh, in, of love in, in how we serve those who are lost in the wilderness. We can tell the world that there is a God who created them and loves them just as they are. God would even move mountains for them. Now we get to join God in that work because the world needs to hear that good news. There are so many right now who suffer in silence, alone, who feels like no one knows their pain. I guarantee you there are people in your life every day, whether it's on the Zoom screen or in person, who, who put on a mask, both literally and figuratively, in order to pretend that everything is okay. There are probably people who are watching this right now, who have hidden away from our detection, pain, and sadness deep inside them. There are people in our community who are hiding in plain sight, who feel unloved or unlovable, who feel lost in this wilderness of the pandemic and going through trials that we don't even know about. So let's not be selective in sharing God's love. It's a, a gift freely given to us, so let us freely give it to others. All people need to hear and experience that love of God and be that hopeful force in the world so people of God today hear. This is how we prepare for the way of the Lord. We proclaim a God who loves us, who died for us, and who excitingly seeks us out. God will seek out the lost and help with that which we cannot see. God will deliver as God has always done. So this Advent, let's share that hope. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time, thank you. We are singing verses 3 and 4 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number two verses at a time, so are we two, so verse three and four, math. All right. to this weary world. Here are prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with the faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer, suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Today we especially pray for all those we name aloud and the sounds of our hearts are on the screen. Lead us to a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregations who are not joyful this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a compassion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and have taught us to continue their faithful work. Make us generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen giving thanks for the gifts we've received that enable us to do this powerful, life-changing ministry, we offer up this offering prayer. Generous God, you've created all that is, and you provide us in every season. Bless all that we offer. Through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. This time we'll be celebrating communion. Uh, I invite you to get your 
bread, wine, or juice ready. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you in Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave her all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. All are welcome. At this time, I invite you to uh, share in the Holy Communion by sharing the bread, the body of Christ given for you, and the wine or juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. We're continuing the communion. We'll sing light one candle to wash the Messiah. Verses, uh, verse two. Verse two. I'm just going to sing one and two. One and two. Thank you. One and two. <laughs> Sorry. That's what I meant to say. One and two. And if you're still communing, that's okay. Light one candle to wash the Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light two candles to wash for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them homeward. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Creator of stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And yes, thank you for joining us in this worship. We do have adult format, or sorry, <clears throat> Christian Education Adults Edition uh, at 1030. We're doing a fun uh, nativity-themed um, uh, class, so please join us for that. It's a good time. Uh, we have Sunday school, youth group, 
uh, got a lot going on. So keep an eye out, of course. Remember to sign up Taco Night and uh, Live Nativity. Please sign up ahead of time. Thank you. Have a good week. God bless you.